my name is Inge, coming to you from Denmark. That's the reason behind my Danish accent. Uh, in these podcasts, I talk about my passion for knitting. But lately, I've been doing some knitting tutorials, showing you step by step uh, doing some projects. First, these uh, felted slippers by Sandness, and next, the first published patterns of mine, the felted pearl mittens and hat. Uh, however, this episode would be just a normal one, or should I say, usual one for me. So welcome back. And if you're a new viewer, welcome. And as a new, uh, you may wonder why Knitting Lab and who is Inge? It's because I just love to explore and experiment, investigate, test and try out new things. And while doing so, I try to share all my learnings in these videos. And uh, this led me to think about a childhood memory of mine um, being a cartoon called Professor Balthasar. I saw this quite often as a child. I guess it's origins from the former Yugoslavia. And the character of this cartoon, uh, Balthasar, He's a man who just uh, loves to um, help out in his town to uh, give uh, solutions to problems. And he has this uh, wonderful, very colorful lab with a machine. And he gets in there with his problems and things and things and ah, look quite distracted on the way sometimes. But by some uh, magic or hard work or um, uh, new products keep popping out of his machine. So I thought, Wow, I would like to be such a scientist when I grow up. And, uh, you know, I actually became a scientist within uh, pharma and biotech. And uh, I try to bring all the good stuff from science into knitting. And actually, there is a lot of science and math in uh, knitting. And, um, yeah, today I will try to bring some into the episode with a the common theme of sleeves. Um, because, yeah, sleeves can be an easy knit, uh, also sometimes boring, leaving you on sleeve island. But you can also be on sleeve island for other reasons. Uh, maybe the sleeve doesn't fit your arm or it's simply very complex to knit. So I will show you some of my issues and uh, solutions to problems uh, in this episode. And uh, yeah, well, you may also wonder how come she's sitting there with only a fraction of a sweater on. Uh, on. So it's because uh, this is uh, a test knit of mine of my uh, next pattern in line uh, being the tree trunk sweater. I will show you a glimpse of a final one here. It's part of the uh, forest sweater collection. And uh, I'm just in the middle of the testing phase, of my own testing phase, that is, before I call out for test knitters. Yeah, I thought, well, this is my uh, first sweater pattern. And, and uh, you know, test knitters, they use a lot of their precious time refining a pattern and help out the designer. So I would like it to be as perfect as I can for test knitters so that they can also, while helping me, getting a, a nice product out of it. So that's why. So I will let you into my uh, designer lab here and uh, we will discuss some of my uh, challenges and how I overcame these. In the last uh, section of the video, I've added in a Q&A section because I have gotten so many questions on YouTube, on uh, Gmail and also some on Instagram. So thank you so much for the, from the bottom of my heart uh, with all your nice comments and questions. Keep throwing them at me. Uh, I get so inspired, it's, it's great. Uh, and uh, I've collected some of them which may have a common interest. So uh, yeah, we will cover them in, in the end of the video. So just as usual, practical information. You can use the small movie clips below to move forwards and backwards in the video to the section of interest. So if you like the video, please uh, give a thumbs up, share and subscribe. Uh, so yeah, without further ado, let's continue. Let's go back to my knitting lab or designer lab that is. 
Um, I started making these tree trunk sweaters last summer and I started with the one for my grandson Robin being two years old at that time. So I just loved the looks of this uh, diagonal uh, stripe here and was inspired by the tree trunk bark. So, um, and I wanted, uh, that's an add-on actually, or a sidetrack or something, but I wanted to use uh, for him non-dyed yarn, non-superwash yarn, all natural yarn, and found this 100% uh, merino wool, eco Highland wool. So um, very, very soft and nice to, you can wear it close to skin. So, so uh, yeah, so my husband asked, couldn't you make one for me because it looks great. And I said, yes, sure I can, I'll make one for you. And I'm not sure I actually considered the consequences of my yes there because it was uh, hard for me because obviously I hadn't figured out the logics and and the math behind uh, this design because I had much trouble figuring out um, the length of the front piece compared to the back piece before you join for the body and also how to shape the neckline so the length of or the number of stitches in between and and how far to go and so on to match is exactly this one. So um, I must have looked quite uh, frustrated and I was. Uh, so my uh, daughter said to me, you know, mom, if you cannot solve this problem, maybe you should take a rest from it for a while and leave it be and do something else. And you know what? She is so wise. So uh, I took her up on, on the advice and left it be and started knitting something else. And now it's been sitting there for half a year and uh, uh, actually, it got well responded both by family and on social media. So people have been asking me, well, where do I find the pattern or couldn't you make one for me? So now I will take up the challenge again. And I simply had to solve these uh, problems. So I thought what to do. And often when you have a problem, you have to peel off uh, the layers of the onion uh, and uh, go to the center being uh, the basics, back to basics, that is. So let's have a look at this uh, poster here. Um, I've, I have a sketch of the layout being you start at the back and, and, and knit the back and then you pick up the stitches for, for the shoulders and, and do the front and then add the shoulders afterwards if you want this drop shoulder construction, which I did. So um, I, to, in order for me to, to figure out uh, this one, I simply needed to get all the unknowns known. And I had and found this uh, standard uh, from Craft Yarn Council, uh, an American standard, and I was so happy. This is a golden document, I tell you, because it uh, gives you every information on um, on sizes from from baby to to grown up uh, male and female, and uh, even guidelines on how to become a designer, a knitwear designer, and uh, it felt so at home because I'm used to much regulation and standards within pharma, so uh, this was uh, quite nice, and um, so so help there, but. But what else? And I looked and I looked at this drawing, uh, but as a visual person, I simply had to knit something up to start figuring this out. So I did. So I have actually done a lot of those uh, to figure it out for, for more sizes. And um, let's have a look at this one, um, meant to be a sweater for my, my grandmother. She's a size X small. So, when looking at it and trying it out, it came to me like epiphany uh, number one, that actually there's no difference between the front and the back piece. When you hold it here where they connect, they have exactly the same length. So it just looks like it is longer in the front, but it isn't. And you will get only um, like a small difference here to make up the raised neck and you can do the 
the ribbing of the neck afterwards. So, so I was so happy when I figured this out. I was jumping and dancing and told my family, now I have cracked the nut, now I can, now I can move on. But then, you know, I looked at the sweater once again and I, it's easy because he's worn it ever since. So every day, <laughs> all the problems of this sweater comes into my face, so to speak. So I thought, well, 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 well. Actually, the drop shoulder construction, even though I've tried to pull it a bit in uh, compared to uh, many of those uh, I've seen in designs, which are down here, uh, I still wanted it to be uh, moving up on the shoulder. Uh, but yeah, why? I really want this sweater to fit any size and look good on any size. And I guess I know what I'm talking about because I have filled out the full range. Once I was very big, I was a size 5XL or maybe even a 6XL. And to cut a long story short, I realized my problem and uh, I yeah, lost weight doing a lot of exercise, watched my diet and uh, maybe got a bit more balance in my life and uh, uh, re with regard to work that is. So, uh, so I ended up in a size medium and uh, uh, yeah, again, to cut a long story short, then uh, I stayed for that weight for many years and then life happened to me and uh, yeah, both good and bad <laughs> explanations and COVID and so on. And, increasingly I gained weight again and now I'm a size 2XL and has been for years now. So, so um, yeah, 2XL on the top and two sizes smaller in the bottom. So I know the challenges of fitting your body in, uh, in all this uh, range. And I, it's very, very important to me to, uh, yeah, accommodate a good fit for all sizes. So, this led me to think about the sleeves because when you have a drop down sleeve, uh, you get this extra fabric and your shoulders seem uh, larger than they actually are because it widens your shoulders. So I would like to go for uh, drawing in uh, the shoulder part even more. So I started doing this and I did it in the Twisted Forest sweater for my husband. So it was kind of a drop shoulder design within this European shoulder construction. So I still picked up the stitches here, but in order to compensate for the missing fabric here, I just did some short rows before I finalized the sleeve as usual. Um, but then thinking about it and getting back to the pattern, it can be uh it can be a bit uh, dangerous because you get new ideas and you completely uh, change the design and that's not what i want because i like the original one however i would like it to be a bit more fitted so let's look at the next poster here because i have drawn in the male uh, shoulder and uh, these three colored stripes they kind of illustrate uh, what I'm talking about. So the, the red one is a drop down shoulder I made in the first place. And then uh, the green one was kind of in between with the short rows on the shoulder. And now I have come to uh, decide on this going full Monty with the set in sleeve being the belt shape sleeve. And this uh, gives me yet uh, other considerations, uh, male, female differences on ratios on, on the shoulders and the breast and, and how then to shape the, the sleeve and so on. But this, I decided, yes, I want to do this uh, change in design, which is a major <laughs> decision in pharma and it was for me here. So to kind of change the direction and make it a bit more designer complex, that is. So let's look at the next poster here, uh, where I've tried, tried again to illustrate what I mean. So it actually looks like a bell-shaped curve, where at the top of the shoulder, you have this straight piece being uh, the new cast-ons. Let me show you here on, 
on the chest. So here I pick up the stitches on the straight part on, on the front piece. And then I do steep increases here. Then I do slow increases here on the part down to uh, the armpit, where I do steep increases again to, to get this curve. But now um, a new problem arises because how can I figure this out and what's the formula behind it? Because again, I need a formula to grade and uh, get it into my Excel sheet. So, so uh, on every row, on sec every second and so on, depending on the yoke height of the size and so on, a lot of consideration. So uh, let's, let's move to the next poster. Uh, because I was searching uh, the internet and so on for some information of the uh, bell-shaped sleeve. And I also uh, dug up some of my old memories uh, <laughs> because uh, my mom was a professional sewer and she also made her own design. So I kind of recalled her standing there at the table cutting out the fabric with her own designed uh, uh, patterns and talking about uh, these breast darts and and the, sh and the sh slope of the of the sleeve and so on. So, could we do this very complex? I'm not at all an expert, so please only also advise me out there if I'm talking nonsense. But uh, now I'm doing the test knitting with these kind of simple um, rules of thumb, and I have found them to to work at least for for this knit. So. So what I figured out was that with, if I took the measurements of the shoulder and the chest or the breast and subtracted the shoulder from the chest, this number I get is corresponding to the slope. If you look at it from the perspective of the sleeve, uh, uh, the, the armpit here, then the straight piece being the cast-ons and the steep increases on the sides. So if you take this uh, difference between chest and, and shoulder and divide it by four, then you have half of it as the cast-ons and one-fourth here uh, on the front and one-fourth on the back. So now I had something to put into Excel and I have something to work about. And uh, the wonder um, in this design is that I can count in stripes. So. Um, of course, I count in, in stitches in, uh, in Excel, but you know, when, when you look for the symmetry and how it works, it's so easy to work in stripes. There are so many stripes here. You have, you have to have so many stripes at the front to match the back and, and sleeves and so on. So I work in creases in stripes. And uh, this, this really, really helped me. Uh, if you have a quiet moment or a cup of coffee, you can have a further look on all my figures here uh, to see how I did it. But now I got uh, all what I needed to go on uh, with the design. And as you can see, and I said, I have many of these. Um, so moving forward in my own testing phase of, of the design. So I guess for... I will select a range uh, in the in the ranges here and and make these uh, yoke tests at least until uh, I have to uh, combine the yeah join join the stitches under the arm. Okay, so uh, yeah, is there more to tell about it? No, yeah, there is uh, how to move on with the test knitting. So I guess let's have a coffee break and uh, or tea and then meet up and talk about uh, the next phase on test knitting. Yeah, I have started thinking about the next steps being the test knitting and how to do the process and set up the community and yeah, go about it. And uh, as I am totally new into uh, having this design out and call for test knitters, I would highly appreciate your feedback if you are uh, an experienced test knitter, which are your preferences. You have probably tried more things, so what would be nice for you. So 
uh, I see that we can make communities uh, having an email conversation or a group on Ravelry or somewhere else. But what have actually worked for you and been most efficient? That is uh, one thing. And then uh, the other thing is uh, requirements uh, to become a test knitter. Uh, I would say I have very few requirements. Uh, of course, you, it would be nice if you have uh, knitted uh, a sweater, uh, particularly a uh, uh, European shoulder construction before, that would be helpful. Um, but I don't mind that you are not an experienced test knitter uh, to do test knitting. I guess let's grow together and figure this out and have a nice talk and uh, create a community, hopefully, of experienced test knitters and new test knitters and me as a, a new designer uh, trying to uh, learn uh, everything from you experienced people. Uh, and this will be very fun and uh, it's so great to exchange uh, ideas and so on. So, yeah, I thought the first step would be kind of uh, you get back to me if you would like to be a test knitter and I can see that people call out for test knitters on Instagram so I can do that and we can uh, put up a mailing list but but before that step uh, please advise on the best uh, form of community is it a Facebook group, Ravelry, what, whatever works the best actually if there is a such a thing um, and then we can go on if anyone uh, would like to yeah talk to me we can talk on the phone or something to figure out a way to do it if if you <laughs> would would spend your present time and, and invest on in advising me i would be very very grateful uh, so uh, yeah um uh, I will do the test knits for, for the sweaters myself, for the sweaters uh, uh, ordered or requested from my family, so to speak. And then uh, I will start the official uh, test knitting phase because then I have written all the small uh, tweaks and twerks of the different sizes down. Yeah, I guess, I guess let's uh, move on to, to other sleeve stuff or just uh, finished objects. When I made this sweater for my husband, the sleeves ended out too short. So when he had worn it for a while, he said, well, uh, Inge, couldn't you please uh, elongate the sleeves a bit because uh, they were kind of here and it was definitely too short. I, I could see this. So, so what happened? Yeah, for one, I I don't know, but I keep underestimating the length of the arms of my um, of my males here in the family, both my grandson and and my husband. So it keeps amazing me how long these arms are. And the second thing is that actually this yarn, lovely yarn, it it changes when blocking. So. Uh, the stitch count remains the same, 20 stitches per per 4 inches or 10 centimeters, but the row gauge changes from 25 to 27. So when washed and blocked, it shrinks in length. So you have to actually consider in the pattern to, uh, to make it longer than uh, the fit when unblocked. So uh, all in all, both these factors uh, made me uh, elongate the sleeves. And let's have a look and, at what I did and how it looks like, because I haven't blocked the added sleeves yet. So you can clearly see the difference here. So this is a blocked one and this is the unblocked one. And look what happens these stitches they calm down and look so even and nice with this yarn so uh, i guess it's kind of the same elasticity so that's what i said the stitch count doesn't change it's still 20 but the row so i thought well i had seen some on instagram uh, elongating uh, their sleeves and 
uh, adding in uh, yeah a thread or a needle here and here and do the cut and then uh, sew it together with the kitchener stitch so i thought this is possible and it is but i made one uh, mistake uh, that is to do the easy part because uh, if we uh, look like the, at this sleeve like it is the original one i added in here and here just above the rib and when i had cut it here i couldn't figure out to make the kitchener stitches right from from the first row here being uh, the one by one rib and this one being the three by one rib it didn't look nice and then i decided well uh, i had cut here so i just pick up the stitches here and make a new rib but that was not my intention uh, in the first place it was to um, kind of yeah just uh, sew them together and save time but it didn't work out but now looking at it again i see that if i had just made the cut here then it would be the same kind of stitches on each side of the cut and i could have just done the piece here why why did i cut at the here i don't know May, yeah i just did but uh, <laughs> by all your errors you get wiser don't you so uh, so uh, this is uh, this is doable and uh, uh, he is keeps uh, calling out for when this uh, sweater is done so he can wear it but i just had to show you the difference here uh, before i can block it and then he can can wear it because it is nice and cozy uh, you can also see some of my learnings with this sweater is now going back that I picked up too many stitches for the neckline here. So it's a bit of, but actually when he wears it, you don't see it because his shoulders, they stretch it out. So yeah. Okay. Enough details about this one, but that was another uh, sleeve issue. And I have a third sleeve issue um so uh, let's pick up the next finished object i managed to finalize this sweater uh inspired by robert redford and his tennis sweaters with this twisted rib in the colors picking up the small donegal color spots of the of the yarn it is this uh, viking yarn picasso tweed and I've actually bought yet another one to make some from my bonus grandsons and uh, grandson coming up in in uh, in April. So uh, yeah, um, but when I made this, as I said, it keeps amazing me how long the arms are on my uh, boys here in the family. <laughs> I can understand Robin because he's growing uh, all the time, but uh, yeah, my husband. But even so, uh, I had made this sleeve and it was too short. So I ripped it back and made the other sleeve longer. However, I had made the design figuring out uh, the frequency of the decreases of the sleeve. So now I was in a new position. So what to do? So let me show you. Uh, the math on how to elongate a sleeve uh, to fit your arm length because I guess most often you want your own arm length but the pattern gives you uh, a certain length uh, so you can get it longer or shorter as you want uh, if you just use this uh, formula here. So yeah, let's move on to some posters. Yeah, I'm still wearing this one and it's actually very nice and warm because there is, uh, it's very cold in Denmark right now and there's a kind of bit of a draft or maybe not a draft, but it's convection uh, heat from, from a cold wall or window. So, so it warms nicely here in the neck. So yeah, okay, but back to the poster. Yeah, before we look at the first poster, pick up a cup of coffee or tea. There are a lot of numbers here so so buckle up but but i mean once you endure and get to the formula 
you will have it for good and can just add in your own numbers and you will never be in doubt of elongating or, <clears throat> or shortening sleeves of patterns anymore. If you are an experienced knitter and have done this a zillion times, you don't need it, just fast forward. Okay, but let's look at the poster. So the problem is the sleeve length and you don't know where to put the decreases according to the pattern now when you change the length. Uh, we have to assume that this uh, sleeve is kind of a trapeze form so from the armpit and down you will uh, make it decreases evenly in the in the sleeve so if it's different uh, form um, then yeah you cannot use this formula but you will see that this formula is uh, two equations with two unknowns and uh, the knowns this is the yarn gauge your arm length that is your preferred arm length and the stitch count at the armpit um, and the stitch count at your cuff so this you know and these numbers uh, you need so let's look at the next poster and have an example here um, because i have this sleeve and i have it's not an actual sleeve i've picked up some numbers which can easily be calculated uh, for ease of explanation so i have this sleeve i want it to be 55 centimeters long and the cuff to be five centimeters and i know that i have 80 stitches up here and 30 stitches as a cuff so when i look at my gauge uh, i have uh, 20 stitches times 25 rows with for the four inches or or 10 centimeters so i know that i use two stitches per centimeters uh, for the for the kind of stitch gauge and then 2.5 rows per centimeters yeah the row count and um, so um, now for the calculations because you have to figure out the number of rows available uh, for your decreases so i take uh, the 50 centimeters because I subtract the cuff. Um, number of rows in this case is 55 minus 5, so uh, I have 50 centimeters and I multiply by the row count per centimeter or inch. But now, yeah, this is uh, European uh, gating here. So this gives me 125 rows to, to use for the full arm length. And then I need to know the number of stitch uh, decreases needed. So I just take the 80 stitches at the um, shoulder and uh, subtract the 30 stitches at the cuff, which gives me 50 stitches. And uh, the next thing is to figure out the number of decrease rounds needed. So I know that I decrease by two stitches on every decrease round. So I take the 50 stitches and divide them by two. So now I know I need 25 rounds. So the decrease frequency is now 125 rows available and 25 decrease rounds, which gives me five rounds. So the result being that I make 25 rounds of decreases on every fifth round. And this is very nice. I don't need any uh, fancy formula because you have an integer being the uh, five rounds so that's nice so the trouble trouble is here if i have numbers giving me not an integer uh, giving me five point something rounds and this is what we will look at now so let's have a look at poster number two we have the same uh, length of the sleeve needed However, now we have 90 stitches at the shoulder part and still the 30 stitches at the, at the cuff. So we have to do the calculations once again. Uh, we still have the same uh, number of rows, the same, uh, and, but the number of stitches to be decreased change. So we have 90 stitches minus 30 stitches, which gives us this 60 stitches. 
and um, this also uh, changes the number of decrease rounds so again we have two decreases per decrease round so we have to so subtract the um, or divide the the 60 stitches by two giving us 30 rounds so now the decrease frequency is 125 rows divided by 30 which gives us 4.2 rounds but we can only uh, decrease in in integer rounds right so it doesn't add up so what to do is so we need some decreases at every fourth row and some decreases at every fifth row but the unknown is how many uh, decreases on every fourth and how many on every fifth and this gives us the first equation that we know that in total we need to do 125 rows right so we need a which is the unknown a times on the fourth row and b is the second unknown on every fifth round which gives us 125 then we do the math we can subtract and add on both sides of an equation so we end up having that four times no a uh, on the fourth row equals 125 minus 5 uh, b on every fifth row okay so now we look at equation two because we know that the total sum of decrease rounds is 30 and this will be both increasing on the fourth and the fifth round. So we have that A plus B equals 30. So now we have the two equations. We have the two unknowns. So now it's, it's possible to solve. So I just put in the information. I have the equation 4A uh, is equal to 125 minus 5B. And I add in equation 2 in this equation and then again I use the principle of subtracting and adding on both sides of the equation which leaves me to B is 5 and A is 25 and now I know that I need to do 25 decreases on every fourth row and 5 decreases on every fifth row so i have solved the puzzle so now now i need to figure out where to put do the the fast increases or, or the less fast increases that sounds weird but when looking at a sleeve your arm is the widest up here and it turns uh, uh, smaller <laughs> here that's that that you know so when you look at the decreases, uh, would you do increase by every fifth row here and every fourth row here? Because you have a higher frequency when you need it to get uh, a smaller faster. So that's how I would do it. So I would start with the, with the, the five decrease rounds here and end up with all the 25 decrease rounds here. And then I'm ready for the cuff, either go down a couple of needle sizes to do the cuff or just in the in the last round do the number of decreases to end up with the stitch count of the cuff uh, just like in the pattern yes that was it that was actually it so i guess uh, what you need is uh, just this uh, final uh, poster and the one before showing you the calculations you need before you can add in the in the equations and uh, you will be good to go with every sleeve you need okay right and over of math today it's done it's all good now we will just relax and knit and sip our coffee to uh, finished objects and uh, whips no no more finished objects just whips and the q a section have a look on this whip the sweater for my daughter-in-law yeah it's obvious we have passed the Chinese New Year so I didn't make it but I have come to the place where I have 
have a split for the body and sleeves and connected the body. Uh, but let me just tell you a bit about the road. So she wanted this uh, simple raglan sweater, however, with a split neck. And this was a new technique for me. So lovely with a new challenge. I love it. And it went fairly uh, fine, I think, uh, with this double band in a twisted rib. So um, I went down and I figured out to connect here in the bottom part. Uh, and uh, then I thought, well, let, let her try it on to see if it fits before I finalize body and sleeves, uh, because then it's far too late to do changes. And she did, and she said, well, it is fine, but actually I had hoped for a bit deeper split neck. And there started the challenges because I'm a terrible person with regards to yarn saving. But I don't know if it's terrible, but it gets me into trouble when ripping back sometimes because instead of cutting the yarn, I do tips, uh, do uh, tricks with with the uh, with the uh, uh, work here, and so that I can continue with the same yarn. So when I had to kind of rip back uh, this uh, band and. Uh, kind of um, yeah, elongated to do the split at a lower place, I had problems. So I was knitting, ripping back, knitting, ripping back a lot of times. And this kind of uh, prolonged the time doing this one. So I didn't make it obviously for Chinese New Year, which was yesterday. So too bad, but um, and it also left me with other issues. Um, so you can see here kind of stuff that I need to fix from the back side, and I think it's possible. I just tightened up a stitch and so on. But uh, more learnings about this yarn, because when knitting with it at start here, I felt like, well, this yarn that she bought at a fair is called Bullefrø from Tendegon in Danish, and it's 100% uh, fine merino wool, but it is not very forgiving when knitting with it. And it kind of attracts every dust and, and fiber in the room. So I guess there is something, you keep me seeing doing this because it, it attracts everything. I guess it has to be the surface electricity uh, of the yarn or something. I actually haven't experienced this this much before in, in a yarn. And also when I knit with it, already when knitting, it kind of starts looking a bit fussing, uh, start pilling even when knitting. So yeah, I would have second thoughts about buying Oh, I don't think I will use this one anymore. And it's not because I was ripping back and knitting again, you might think, because every time I did it, I took a new yarn bowl because I don't want used yarn to be the issue when it is obviously non-forgiving in the first place. So, yeah. And I talked to her about it because she's kind of a perfectionist just like me. But we agreed, let's use the yarn and hope and fin finalize the sweater and hope that it will end up very fine when washed and blocked sometimes and most often magic happens. I think it's a lovely color and it will be a good design, I think. So, yeah, I will just finalize, but it's not a it's not a happy knit now. Now. The challenge uh, is made with the fun stuff, so it's, uh, what should I call it? I just do it now. This is my champagne cardigan by Petit Knit. And uh, I'm happy to tell you that besides the Italian bind off, I have finalized the hem now. So when this is done, I can uh, continue with the sleeves and the neckband, double neckband. And now I have tried it on the red one, so 
and I've also done double neck bands before on other projects so this will be fun to be done and uh, unfortunately I cannot try it on right now because I haven't yeah put in a wire to show you but uh, I have tried it on uh, and it actually fits quite nice this is not the yarn it's stitch markers so uh, it'll be nice to have this project done uh, and I just uh, agreed with myself to take a couple of rows every day and at some point it will be done so I can use it yeah We have now reached the Q&A section and I've collected a few uh, questions here uh, which may be of common interest. It is rather uh, positively, I would say, overwhelming. Thank you so much for all your comments and questions, both on YouTube and on Instagram and my Gmail. It has been a joy. Um, every kind of type of question and uh, reach out for help on the slipper pattern especially so uh, yeah uh, so the first uh, question or many questions uh, were related to my modifications on on these slippers as you see my my first uh, attempt here was according to pattern which gave uh, this one and also a modification to the pattern was not to use the Sandnes Fritis garn, but this uh, Alaska garn. And I got a lot of questions on my modifications and the, the use of this yarn, which I would say is much more cost efficient than uh, the Sandnes yarn. And I find that this yarn is uh, perfect for the slippers. It's very durable and uh, yeah, thick and nice and actually it takes less yarn than the Fritis garn because it felts more easily so it's it will end up being both a faster knit and, and saving yarn and less cost per yarn uh, bullet gain here so uh, I've tried to answer the questions as uh, best I could and I've added in all my modification in this description box of this uh, video of, of, of the slippers. I don't recall the episode number. Um, so I have a question back to you now. Um, so uh, would you like me to do a modified pattern of, on the slippers with my modifications and using this yarn? Because I could do it. I was searching on Ravelry on how to respect the original design uh, however make some modifications on my own and i saw that i could add a pattern uh, stating this is the sandness uh, double tufla but yet just make my own modifications so i would happily do this if you want it but if it's not needed that you can figure out using the other yarn no problem um, then then it's not needed but otherwise i would uh, like to do it uh, okay so that was a mutual question answer uh, number one so um, uh, another question has been uh, i'm looking down at my notes uh, what about ideas for new episodes do you like to get ideas for new episodes Yes, yes, I really like it. And uh, one idea was to have an episode covering uh, how to de-stash. And uh, yes, it, I guess it is a common, <laughs> common issue for many of us because I guess I heard one say that uh, purchasing yarn or yarn acquisitioning and, and doing knitting these are two different hobbies. You just love the yarn and touching and seeing and, and you love the knitting. So, so I mean, many of us, we have more than needed. So I have started um, thinking about how I would attack uh, this and also do something with my own stash. I have quite a stash because I love to have the yarn at hand when I get an idea and uh, I start up a design. So so yes yes natalia i will do this and uh, if 
others of you have ideas for things to cover in these episodes, please, please let me know and I will uh, add it in my episode notes and uh, keep moving with new topics. Okay, uh, I have written here questions on the Forest Sweater Collection. Uh, Yes, it was, uh, yeah, yeah, it was actually more my sweaters. And I'm so happy that you asked, where can I find the pattern for your uh, sweaters? Oh, and I have to answer you uh, straight out that you can't find them anywhere yet because uh, they are not published. But I am working on it and I guess I have done more designs that I can keep up the pace with the grading and the patterning but I will do so. Um, I guess maybe we in the next uh, episode could look at the four sweater collection and you could help me prioritize which ones to do first. And we will look at it and uh, I will just uh, try out the ones for the summer collection that people have asked for patterns. Uh, so let me just try on this one. It is, I call the flower bug tea and as soon as I've made the tree trunk sweaters, I will. I have made the pattern, so I'm in the tech phase of this one, and I guess it will be ready so that you can do the summer knitting. This is made in uh, natural plant fiber yarn, so uh, ah, I like it very much, and I don't know if you can see it, but I have worn this very, very, very much. I love the yarn and and uh, the design, obviously. Otherwise, I wouldn't have done it. <laughs> um, okay, I have a hard time with this self praise on my designs, but but of course, when you're a designer and you make it and and um, decide to publish, it's because you like it yourself. <laughs> uh, okay, um, the next one uh, people have asked me about is this one. It's actually. Uh, one of the first uh, teas I made uh, of my own design. It's a very simple beginner knit. If you haven't done lace before, it is very, very simple. I call it the summer lace tea. And uh, I have also written down the pattern for this one, but you know, the grading and so on um, and finalizing. So uh, also coming up as a summer pattern. Yeah, yeah. I guess there has been more asked, but but let me take it up in an episode um, uh, so you can look at them. But I think I will uh, prioritize uh, this one. Yeah, I don't know. This one is very easy, so maybe this pattern comes out first. Okay, uh, more questions. I'll have a look in my notes. Yeah. I've had questions because in the episode, I don't recall the number where I started presenting the tree trunk sweater and the four sweater collection. I showed you and explained how I would do the fitting for male sizes because I started these, you know, for males. And uh, I've been asked, uh, could you show, uh, show me this for female sizes and do the same kind of, of walkthrough? Yes, yes, I would love to do it. But I've been waiting to finalize the, the tree trunk women pattern uh, to do it. And when done, I will do it in the same way as for the male sweaters. And we can uh, have a look at the fitting. Yeah. Mm -mm -mm. Okay, I guess this is all for now and uh, we have finalized this episode being the normal one or usual one for me. So a lot of tech stuff today, I guess. I hope you enjoyed it just as much as I did. Um, so yeah, throw comments at me, questions, whatnot. I love it and uh, I will see you back in next episode. So Roger and over from Inge's Knitting Lab, color me happy, just like Balthazar. <laughs> if I could, I would have added in his, uh, the intro song on the video, it's so nice. And I will spare you for singing. Uh, I, 
I was in a choir once, but as I get older and rusty, nah. Okay, Bratyanova. Bye-bye.